Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome once again to the WP Builds podcast. This is episode number 248, entitled How Gravity Hopper Will Take Care of All Your Gravity Forms. It was published on Thursday the 23rd of September 2021. My name's Nathan Wrigley, and I'm going to keep the housekeeping pretty short this week. Other than to say, head over to wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe, where you can keep in touch of everything that we produce each and every week. The main thing that I'm going to mention this week is the fact that the Page Builder Summit is coming back around again. In fact, it's happening between the 18th and the 22nd of October this year, 2021. Those dates again, the 18th to the 22nd. 2nd of October 2021, head over to the pagebuildersummit.com website, which you can probably figure out is over at pagebuildersummit.com. And over there, you'll be able to see a list of all the speakers and the presentations. We haven't exactly finalized all the exact dates for everything, but I suggest that you go over there and have a look, see who's appearing and Get yourself signed up to the list. There's a button on the main page of the website over there. And if you click on that button, we will keep in touch with you. You'll be put on our list and we'll let you know as and when things start to finalise properly. So that's pagebuildersummit.com. Head over there and sign up onto the list by clicking the Join the Waitlist button. It really is going to be a marvellous event. The previous two have been very good. I'd appreciate it if you listen to the podcast and you want to spread the word. Please do so. Use your Twitter feed and your Facebook and all of that goodness to share it out. Once more, pagebuildersummit.com, 18th to the 22nd of October. We would love to see you there. If you're interested in sponsoring that event, then please head over to pagebuildersummit.com forward slash sponsor. And over there, you'll be able to find some details about the different things that we can offer you if you would like to sponsor the event. And I would really hope that one or two of you would. Okay, let's get on to the main event of the podcast this week. This is episode number 248, and in this episode, I am chatting to a really nice chap, Joshua Vandercar. He has got a product called Gravity Hopper, and it does a whole load of interesting stuff. So if you've got something like Main WP or GoDaddy Pro, you can link all of your websites together and update them, update the plugins and the themes and all of that kind of thing. Well, this, the idea of Gravity Hopper is that it does something similar in that it is a central dashboard for all of your Gravity forms. And as the podcast goes on, Joshua explains how all that works. There's an absolute ton in there, apart from just having this central dashboard. It works with multi-site You can kind of save away typical form constructions or collections of fields that you produce. You can add notes and organize yourself in a much, much more efficient way than normal. I hope that you get something out of this. You never know. At the end of this, you may be wanting to reach out to Joshua and we provide links for you to do that in our show notes. One thing that I would like to mention, Joshua has been very kind and he's given all WP Builds listeners a 30% off coupon code. I bet you can guess what the coupon code is. Yes, it is the coupon code WP Builds. All lowercase, I'm not sure that will matter. But if you want to get yourself 30% off, use that coupon code at the checkout. So here it comes, Gravity Hopper number 248. I hope that you enjoy it. Hello there. Welcome to the WP Builds podcast. Once again, thanks for joining us. Today we have an interview and today the interview is with Joshua Vandercar. How are you doing, Joshua? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I failed to ask you um, properly at the beginning before we started recording exactly where you are. I, I recall that we briefly touched on that, but tell us tell us where you're based. Uh, so I'm in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, kind of northeast corner of the state. Been here about five years now. Recently moved down from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okie doke. And how long have you been using WordPress? Are you a seasoned WordPress developer? Are you relatively new on the scene? What's your What's been your journey with WordPress? I think it's been just about 10 years now. Um, I've been using it um, as a developer um, for probably about five years. 
uh, prior to that, mostly a user and getting familiar with it. The the reason that we got you on the podcast today, I actually can't recall how we ended up discussing this, but we, we've somehow connected and uh, we've got you on the call today so that we can talk about something called Gravity Hopper. Um, I always like it when people have a URL which is identical to their product name because then it's really easy for everybody to find it. Essentially, go to gravityhopper.com um, at any point well, during this episode if you want to find out what's going on. But uh, in in a, in a couple of minutes, maybe less, just briefly tell us what Gravity Hopper is. Yeah, so Gravity Hopper is a uh, plugin uh, primarily for developers that sits alongside uh, the Gravity Forms plugin, and it serves as um, a kind of a network hub, um, a dashboard for managing your Gravity Forms across a network of sites. Uh, so if you think of the plugins like Main WP, Manage WP, Infinite WP, all those that that act as a centralized hub for managing your WordPress sites, uh, this is a similar thing, but for managing your Gravity Forms across the network. Um, Additionally, it serves as kind of a templating engine or a, a building uh, framework for your Gravity Forms. So you can, can set up groups of fields or sections of fields that you want to reuse across your forms. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's get into the, the bits and the pieces of it. But I'm just curious to begin, who who's the sort of intended audience here? Because obviously if you're a, you know, if you're a, a mom and pop store and you've got one website, this doesn't feel like it's going to be a good fit for you. So, who have you built it with? And and I'm interested to know kind of what was the what was the thing that got you building it? Were you scratching your own itch? Was this something that you you suddenly sort of thought, do you know what this is missing? This is something I could I could actually make do with. Yeah, it. So it's a. I think it's a very niche uh, audience that this serves. Um, it is like I think many other the the plugins that, that come on the scene. It is one of those scratch, scratch my own itch type things. Um, about four years ago, I started my own business uh, developing and hosting and maintaining WordPress websites. And as I began building those sites, um, I was a user of, of main WP. Um, and so I, I found that there were some needs that I had there and I started digging into to developing some solutions for that. Um, but additionally, I, I started building a lot of forms and I found that I was often building the same event registration form. I was often building the same uh, donation form for some of the nonprofits, same contact form. And it began to get tiresome uh, adding field after field after field every single time. Um, Gravity Forms does have the you know import export option, so, so I could use that. Um, but I wanted... To, to be able to manage those a little bit more easily. So it was kind of a scratch my own itch thing. Um, I wanted to, to build something that I could use um, and other developers could use. Um, that's that's one of the, one of the things I think I found as as I continued to maintain sites. I was like, there's there's a lot that could be done to, to help us developers um, improve our workflows and our processes and, and save time. So that's, that's kind of where it started uh, development about well, the idea probably about three years ago and, and slowly just kind of, uh, you know, hacking away at development of it. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I'm curious to get your thoughts on that because you've kind of landed exactly where I thought it was going to land. And that is to say that mm. this really feels as if the best solution here is for people who are probably running an agency or something and maybe even somebody who's running a, a we, we say niche instead of niche, so I'm going to say niche. 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 Yeah. Um, I never know how to say No, that. that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just a difference of where you live on, sure. the, on the planet. And so if you've got an agency which is targeting a, a specific niche and you mentioned their kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know, property websites or something like that, you, you are going to have really complicated forms to build. And there's probably a lot of work that's gone into perfecting those forms over time. And whilst you're right, you could go and deploy with an export and then an import it's just an additional step and so if you are producing i don't know dozens maybe hundreds of sites in your agency each and every year this is just time saved i guess yeah 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 um yeah prior to prior to deploying the gravity hopper right you know we have the main dashboard 
plug-in Gravity Hopper, which can connect um, any remote sites. Prior to that, I had built kind of a, uh, a prior iteration, which uh, was installed on a, a multi-site install of Gravity Forms and allowed you to manage your forms across all the child sites um, of your network as well. And so there's, in developing this, I've, I've seen, well, okay, I, th I think I need this, and then I need this, and then I need this. <laughs> um, and, and a lot of it was, yeah, scratching my own itch for, for projects that I was working on. Yeah. The yeah. So just to be clear, it is solely for those people who are using Gravity Forms. Um, it's not it's not a kind of replacement for gravity forms it uses gravity forms and so just quickly touching on the licensing uh, arrangement you would you would have to make sure that let's say you were deploying this through gravity hopper onto 10 sites you'd have to be mindful of not treading outside of the boundaries of what your license is actually allowed but that's that's on you as a as an agency or a developer it's it's got nothing to do with your plugin necessarily you don't you don't manage gravity form licenses or anything like that Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So let's imagine that we've got a fresh install of WordPress because that's that's how it works, right? We need a brand new vanilla install of WordPress in order to put Gravity Hopper on. Is that right? Is is that kind of like something that you have to do, or is that just the preferred solution? Like Main WP, you have your own install, and it basically does nothing apart from Main WP things. That's the same here, right? We we have an install just for Gravity Hopper. Yeah, that's definitely the preferred uh, setup, um, both for you know reliability of the solution, but also security of the data that's passing back and forth from your sites. Okay. And um, in terms of the resources that that would use, I'm guessing that you could probably get away with a, a fairly modest size. You know, you, you wouldn't have to go to the sort of $500 a month tier to make this work. You're going to be on fairly affordable hosting, I'm imagining. Yeah, yeah, you can you can use a pretty basic setup for your, your uh, dashboard. Um, most of the, the actions that you're going to be taking from your network are going to be manually triggered by you. Um, so there's not a whole lot of, you know, cron tasks running in the background to keep things synced. Um, so yeah, pretty simple setup should work. Okay, great. And okay, let's imagine for the sake of argument that we are doing that. We've got our dedicated install of WordPress set up. It's got no plugins on there at all. What what what's the process? What's the workflow that we have to go through? I mean, it's it's fair to say that most of our audience know how to install a a plugin, so we don't need to do that bit. But um, but beyond then, what happens? What what are, what are the steps that we need to do to get this up and running? You can be as detailed or as or as generic as you like. Sure. Uh, yeah. So first step is installing that the the dashboard plugin, the Gravity Hopper kind of main main plugin, and then any sites that you're going to have on your network, we also include a, a, a child plugin um, that manages things on that child site and makes sure that the integrity of the forms, you know, is kept and uh, ensures that, that some pieces are in place on those child sites. So you also install that uh, child, Gravity Hopper child plugin. Um, and then on your dashboard, you can start connecting your sites. And in order to do that, you just type in the URL of your site, click connect, and it is going to go to that child site and it sets up, um, it, it authenticates itself with the application password feature of WordPress. And so it'll set up an application password for your user that you're signed in as, um, and it's sent back to the dashboard and say, okay, we're authenticated. And that's the, the communication that's going to kind of keep things synced. Okay, and does it, forgive me if you just said this bit, does it in any way, shape or form install Gravity Forms on that child site or do you need to be in the child site, get get all that up and running first? Uh, good question. Yeah, uh, Gravity Forms would need to be installed on the child site. It doesn't handle that for you. And any of the, I forget what they're called in Gravity Forms, you know, the, the sort of the dependencies, the add-on, modules yeah, or add-ons add-ons okay does it uh it again it doesn't handle any of those but i presume it it's it, it, in, it it's interoperable with them if you've got them activated yes it is and actually uh one of the features of gravity hopper is that it it runs kind of an integrity check on your forms 
And so let's say I'm deploying a form to one of my child sites that is dependent upon, let's say, the Stripe add-on. And I don't have that Stripe add-on installed on the child site. Uh, when I go to that child site and look at that form, it's going to kind of give me a little notice. Uh, the Stripe isn't installed here, but this form requires it. So, um, yeah, it does, it does integrate with those add-ons, but it doesn't kind of override them. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So more or less we've, we've described the, the, uh, the way that you would put your, uh, parent site, let's call it that your mm -hmm. um, parent site is up and running all by itself. And then we need to go to each of our individual child sites, make sure that we've got gravity forms and it's correctly licensed and we've got the add-ons enabled. Okay. So how do we then link our parent site? and get forms working on posts and pages and wherever else we might need them on the child site. Just talk us through that word flow, workflow. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> so Gravity Hopper manages the forms. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't manage pages on the child site. Uh, so it will allow you to um, kind of fetch any of your forms from the, the network site into your dashboard site. So you can you can pull those in, make a connection with that form. Uh, once you've done that, then you can edit that form on your main dashboard, and kind of sync or send those changes back out to that specific network site or to any other network sites that you might have connected. Um, so if it's a contact form that you're wanting to throw out to all your sites, you can have the same contact form on you know every single realty site you have. You can send it out to all of those network sites. Not, and the change will be distributed to all of them. Okay, so if I'm on the child site, and let's say that we've got this contact form, and, and the exact same contact form is on 10 other sites, I, I can or I cannot modify that particular contact form from the child site, or do I need to go back and, let's say, either rebuild it for all the sites or just rebuild it for the one site? I guess my question is, can I modify yeah. things on the child site, or am I always touching the... The parent site. Yeah, you, um, you're always touching the, the parent site. Okay. Um, we actually have it protected on the child site so that you can't can't edit the form. Uh, you can you can add you know, like specific notifications or maybe there's a couple other like small um, tweaks that you can make to the form, but it's kind of locked down on the child sites once you've you know made that connection. Okay, okay. So again, imagine we've got this contact form, simple contact form, nothing complicated about it, a couple of fields. And how do I make sure that the correct people are receiving the, let's say, notification emails, if, if that's what this contact form is designed for? Um, you know, there's a, there's a few fields, but I need to make sure it goes to all the right people. I've got one form, which is distributed to 10 sites. How does that all work? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good question. Well, <laughs> um, at the moment, the the solution for that is to use merge tags and uh, custom code on the child sites to to ensure that that's you know heading to the proper people. So you would have to no, you're going to have to describe that because I'm I'm not really following what you mean. So I would have to I would put the merge tags in. They have to be done on a child site, or they could be handled as generic merge tags on the on the parent site, or, or would it have to be done yeah. specifically one site at a time? Yeah, they would have to be done. They could be done on the parent site and sent out, but then you'd have to have code on that child site to you know, handle that merge tag. Um, alternatively, you can, yeah, I think, I think I have it set up where you can, you know, set up specific notifications on those child sites for that form as well. Okay. Um, and so if I wanted to do something much more complicated, you can obviously, you can obviously do that. And I could send that out to the same 10 sites the the same principle would apply. I'd have to make sure that um, I don't know any any fields, any information that needed to pass was going to be correctly use using the correct merge tags, if you like. the The question that I've got then is where where does the form actually reside? Is the form on you know is the actual form taking place? Is the processing of the data taking place on the child site? or is it all happening on the main site? 
uh, yeah, so process all the processing of the data happens on the child site. Right. Uh, none of that. None of that data will touch, you know, the network dashboard. Or okay. So that's an important point in terms yeah. of things like GDPR and data compliance. Yep. It's not like if you've got an agency with a hundred websites and the forms are all being filled in on a daily basis. It's not like your one parent site is suddenly the repository of thousands of data points, email addresses and so on. It's all it's all still Correct. taking place inside in the normal yep. fashion in the child sites. Correct. Yeah. There's no data that's passed back and forth when that that form is submitted on okay. the child site. Okay. Um you mentioned that you can you can simplify the sort of workflow of building sites. I can see on on your website there's, there's some nice sort of graphics showing how you can kind of group things together and you can combine fields and all of this. That's that's interesting to me. How how does that work? How do how do you do you know, if you've got a a, a form with complicated fields in it, how, how do you how do you speed up that workflow? Yeah, so I I think that's one of the big kind of powerful features of gravity hopper is is that templating of fields um so so any of the forms that are either hosted on my hub or that are on the child sites on my network i can pull those up within gravity hopper and it's going to show me a an overview or a summary of all the fields that are included in that form and i can select a whole section or i can start selecting specific fields um, it'll show me, you know, fields that are conditional upon one another. So I make sure that I include all of them. You know, if this field is conditional on this one, I make sure I include both of them in that group. Um, and once I have that, that group of fields, let's say it's, uh, maybe I, I need to reuse, uh, emergency contact information for, a, for an individual. Um, so I have, you know, a person's name, phone number, email address. And I want to group all of that in this emergency contact information section. I can grab all of those fields. I can send them over into my hopper for to be used later on any registration form or event form that I am building. Uh, so I'll, I'll be able to easily then just kind of pull those into a new form rather than having to reconstruct that every time I build a registration form. Okay, I I'm I think I'm understanding that correctly, but I'm going to paraphrase it and and correct me as I go if I have modeled it up. You can you can basically create on the child site, you could build a form and then push it back to your main site and in and in some way categorize tag that as okay this is this is now what I'm using for emergency contact details for example and you'd have a you'd have a combination of fields um, that you'd configured correctly and then you could go to a different site and just pull that back off the parent site and it would just immediately just drop into the form um, yeah so at the moment it's it actually all happens from the, the dashboard of the website. So, so you wouldn't be pushing it to your your dashboard and then pulling it from your dashboard. You'd actually be pulling it into your dashboard from the child site Got and it. then pushing it out to a another child. Site. Okay, so I've misunderstood yeah. that. So you would build it on the on the parent site and then you could just push it out. So yeah, okay, yeah. that makes sense. And that's because the the authentication and the connection with the child site, yes, you know, is is happening from that dashboard. It's using an application password, but those child sites don't have that same authentication to the the network yeah, at the moment. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that was uh, that was poor, poorly thought through on my part. <laughs> the, um, the, the next thing I want to ask is, is it possible? So let's say, for example, that I've got a, a simple contact form and I've got an emergency set of fields. I don't, I don't know what you call those groups of fields. Is there a word that you use for those when you combine a bunch of fields and save it away as kind of like a template? Um, yeah, I just, well... I've, I haven't really settled on a word. I've used a number of things. They're in a hopper, so I've kind of called them hops. That'll do. That'll do. Oh, I like it. No, no, no. That's good. I like that. Let's go with that. Um, so let's say that I've got a hop for basic contact form. I've got a hop for emergency contact details. Is it possible to combine the hops into one form? So in other words, I've got two or three parts, two or three hops, all being dragged into the one form. Yes. Yeah. So you'll be able to, any number of hops that you have in your hopper, you can queue them up in the order that you want and click add to form or append them to an existing form if you would like. Um, and it will just 
it'll create that form. Okay. Generate it. Th this feels like a really powerful area, actually, doesn't it? Because if you yeah. if you have built multiple forms before you probably i don't know i was the other day building a form where it, i was just doing a basic pricing calculator you know and you'd put in the number of months and then you'd put in some other variables and out at the bottom would pop out a number based upon what you were doing and you know mm -hmm. that that it took a took a few minutes but i'd squirrel that away somewhere in this case it's just sitting on this one website and i'll probably have to go back and export that if i wanted to but in this case you could you could then suck it back into your parent um, area and have that as a hop to be reused anywhere in combination with any other forms that's really cool yeah yeah, yeah i can yeah. see i can see the you know it it makes building complicated forms more a bit like lego you know you've built you've got your little hops and you're building the yeah. wall out of the little hops that you've got yeah. rather than the, the process that you have to do one field at a time at the moment that's nice and that's that's where that like integrity check comes in that I mentioned earlier. Because if I've if I've added a hop into my hopper that that uses right. a, a field from some third party add on, like let's say Gravity Wiz Unique ID or something, um, well if I add that into a form and I push it out to a site that doesn't have Gravity Wiz Unique ID, it's that's going to break things. Right. So I want to know that. Oh, okay. I've I'm using this add on here. And it's going to tell me that. Okay. So, yeah, if you inadvertently chuck together a load of hops, which basically will never, ever produce a valid form, you'll be notified because there's dependencies that are missing or or perhaps some conditional logic doesn't work because the fields that it's conditional upon are, are not actually present and so on. Okay. Okay. That's nice. You've also got the option to to add notes, which feels a bit like commenting in code. Tell us about the the field notes. Yeah, so that's a it's a separate add-on. I, I have there's a group of plugins that I, I developed along the way that are kind of utility plugins, um, and so that, that field notes is I feel like that's pr probably one of the handiest plugins that I've kind of put out there um, because as I'm developing forms, I'm often wanting to know what is this field doing, right, right, you know, behind the right, scenes. Right. Is this okay? Here's a here's a um, yeah, here's a field. Do I want to know that it's being dynamically populated by some code on the back end of the site, or I want to know that that these are the only valid values that can be passed to it, um, and you know, there I'm intending to populate them as URL parameters on specific pages or whatever the case may be. Um, it allows me to add specific notes to each field on a form and also specific notes for the form itself. And, and that way, you know, I have kind of a, a, I can track my development and see what, what has been built here. Hmm. And down the road, if I need to hand this site off to someone else or I need to hand this form off to someone else, it's all stored within the, the form object itself. So even if I were to export that form and send it somewhere else, um, as long as the field notes plugin is installed it will read that back in and someone would say okay all right this is what's happening with this form this is how it's pulled together um here are some of the things i need to know okay um this is probably going to be the hardest thing for you to explain during this podcast because i'm about to, <laughs> about to explain how you actually build these forms and obviously that would be really easy if we could see a screen but i'm going to challenge you to do that sure. nevertheless what what okay. is what is the ui for actually constructing a form is it is it the exact same ui as gravity forms well i kind of know it's not because i'm looking at your website but um <laughs> explain how it works and what the processes are for building all these sort of like lego blocks we described yeah so actually it's it hooks right into the gravity forms ui um so in the gravity forms ui you you'll be able to build a form. And then if you want to save those hops in the, in the right side of the gravity forms UI, there's a field settings panel where you can add fields and you can modify fields. Um, we've added just another tab right alongside that. This is hopper. That's the one that I'm looking at. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can click that hopper and it's going to present all of your form fields. When you, when you click hopper and then send to hopper, uh, it will, it'll present all those form fields in kind of a, a condensed view so you're able to view your whole form a little bit easier 
and select the actual fields that you want to go in there. So all you need to do is click plus 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 on any you know section or specific fields you want to add to that hopper. Click add to hopper and it's gonna save them over there. Okay. So similarly, you can you hit that hopper and then to add into your form, you you can search for and select the specific hops that you wanna you know append. Yeah, I mean it, it is the 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 modern gravity forms UI just really does look like. Um like the block editor doesn't it and so yeah you've you basically got the gravity forms ui but with this additional tab which enables you to uh, save things to the hopper and drag things out of the hopper to put into the form and uh yeah. and it looks really nice you know it comes along with the this, this stuff that you're familiar with you know all of the form fields and the sections and all of that kind of stuff raises the question is is there any is there any feature that would be available in gravity forms that for reasons unknown to me right at the minute you you can't make use of there's some limitation in gravity forms itself that you you haven't been able to sort of uh, achieve there was some problem with coding it up or what have you sure um well feeds are always a tricky thing with forms um it, at the moment most most feeds that you add to a gravity form are not exported with that form. Um, so if you think about, you know, if you've added a, the Stripe add-on and you have mm -hmm. a, a feed that integrates with Stripe, or if you have uh, MailChimp and you have a feed that integrates with MailChimp, when you export the form, those feeds are not exported with that form itself. And I think usually that's because those feeds are very specific to the site itself and the authentication that that site has with that third-party service. Um, and so that's, that's one of the trickiest things that, that I've found, um, how to, how to handle. So what we've done with gravity hopper is, is those feeds are still, uh, sent with a form when you send it off to the third party site, but they will still need to be configured on that site. So you would need to configure that feed to, you know, actually authenticate with that third party service. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, aside from feeds, anything else that, that you, you, you can't pull off with Gravity Hopper that you would be able to do if you were just to use individual installs of Gravity Forms? Um, well, in, embedding forms, obviously, mm. you have to go to the child sites to, to figure out where you want these forms to live yep. on your site. Yep. Um, but that's it. That, that's, yeah. That's all that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah that, no, that, that's <laughs> I'm, good. I'm, I'm, I'm sure glad once that users that, yeah. start using it, I'll get those bug reports yeah, yeah. saying, hey, how about this? It's better that you've got nothing to say to that question than that you've got loads to say, actually, when you right. think about it. The, um, <laughs> the, the the question occurs to me, did did any of this get done in consultation with Gravity Forms? You know, have you do you keep in touch with them or is this just, I don't mean in terms of partnerships or anything, I just meant, is this sure. something that they're aware of, you know, do, do you, have, have you been speaking to them and making sure that it, it's it's the kind of software that they're happy to have bolted on on top of their product? Sure, sure. Um, well, I, I actually work as a, a support engineer for Rocket Genius in Gravity Forms. Um, so I, I've been employed with them since well, beginning of this year. Um, so so Gravity Hopper kind of you know I started building that about three years ago. I had the idea. And have been um, developing it. It's and then they hired me on to to help users that are using Gravity Forms. Um, and I've had a lot of encouragement. From, nice. Uh, I don't. There's there's no official endorsement. I'll, I I do have to say that you know. But I've had a lot of encouragement and have been inspired by the the other developers that work in the you know the certified developers for Gravity Forms. Oh, that, that that's really nice review. though. It's nice to hear because. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes you wonder if there's you know down the line will this will like could for example gravity forms have cut you out or something like that but it's nice to hear sure. that that is very very unlikely to be the case yeah that's yeah i haven't i haven't had pushback so okay <laughs> that's yeah and they're right down the hall so uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you probably would have done did um d does this work with kind of multi sites does it work is there any sort of configuration of wordpress which this um, you know, might not work with the, the only thing that comes to mind really would be multi-site, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know that I've tested the, the gravity hopper plugin with multi-site, but I, 
as I mentioned earlier, I did develop the separate plugin that is Gravity Hopper Multi-Site Global Forms, which is specifically for being installed on a multi-site network okay. and allows you to manage all of your network forms for that specific multi-site, you know, across all of your child child sites on that network. Um, yeah, I'm not, I, I'll have to run the tests on, on Gravity Hopper when you're, you know, connecting remotely to a, a child site. Yeah. I think it, uh, I would think it should work. I, I can't think of anything that would stand in the way of that. No. Okay. But. Okay. The, so in terms of getting onto maybe the more knots and the bolts kind of thing, if, if what you've uh, been s explaining today kind of piques people's interest, they'll probably want to be heading over to the, your website, gravityhopper.com, as we mentioned a little while ago. And one of the main menu items on there, you've touched on some of these already, is plugins. And I can see that there's eight listed so far. You've got the main Gravity Hopper. And then you've got what I presume are things like, like add-ons for Gravity Forms themselves, multi-site global forms you mentioned, the utility bundle, organized forms, field notes, form integrity, keyboard shortcuts, and easy repeatable exports if there's if there's one of those or two of those that you want to sort of drill down on that you're proud of that you think that i our listeners would be would be well served to know about go for it sure um well multi-site global forms was probably the first one that i had put out there and i know there's been a number of people that have been getting some good use out of that um i've had good feedback on that i should probably I probably need to give it some more attention um, but uh, it's 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 been chugging along and doing it doing its job yeah. for folks so yeah that's good um, I, I would say probably the two two that I'm that I, I really like using are, are field notes um, like I said I, I, I like being able to to track my development and know how I built a form when I come back to it months later um, to be able to see what went into that and and not have to dig around for a, you know to to re <laughs> refigure out um, <laughs> what I what I've done with my forms. Yeah. So that's a that's a huge one to, that I like having installed on my sites. Um, and organized forms is one that I think was uh, that was that was more an answer to a, a need that I was seeing users have. I I think I saw people posting in you know, community forums and on Facebook groups and stuff. Like, I need to be able to group my forms because I have I have 200 forms on my site. Whoa. I, you know, or or more or whatever. And, and I need to be able to, to organize those. I need to be able to group them into folders um, to be able to search and filter them in, a, in an easier way. Uh, so that's uh, that's one that I've I've appreciated having out there. And um, so is it, is it, it's like um it's like a sort of faceted search for things is it you can sort of drill down into taxonomies that you've applied to though to to groups of forms yeah 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 okay. and that that gif that i have on there is is actually a little bit older ui um what it currently has is a drop down yep. um, up near that all active inactive that you can select the specific folder that you want to to drill into yep yep okay um, um, so that then leads me to the the sort of pricing question, and and I'm I'm currently on the the page that for the the plugin that you just mentioned, the organized forms, and I can see at the bottom of that page we've got some pricing, but I don't know if that refers to just this particular plugin, the organized forms one, or if it's the pricing for the for Gravity Hopper as a whole. Um, but I can see you've got a pricing of twenty nine dollars per year for one site um 49 dollars per year for three sites and then you've got the pro license which is 139 for unlimited sites plus it brings along for the ride all of your five utility plugins as well yeah so uh, yeah the pricing um after after having this out there for a little while and kind of seeing where where interest was this is this is kind of how i simplified it you know single site um, three sites for those individual plugins and then for unlimited sites offering kind of that whole utility bundle with all all five of those utility plugins plus any that might develop in the future okay um, and that does not include the gravity hopper dashboard so there's a separate bundle that includes the dashboard and 
all of these utility plugins. Okay, um, where where would we find that? Is that on just the the Gravity Hopper page itself, the plugin for? Correct. Okay, yep. so if you go to the main menu, plugins, and then Gravity Hopper, there it is. I see it. Okay, so we've got pricing of um, one network hub, ninety nine dollars a year. So that's for your parent site, um, which is bundled with the Form Integrity plugin. And then 199 gets you a pro version of that, but it's the same thing. It's one network site, but you get the bundle of all of the um, the add-ons as well. Got it. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm curious. That this is something I've not not seen much before, and this is totally off piece. I hope you forgive me for a moment. You yeah, uh, sure. just below your buy now button. You've um, you're committing. To, well, you, it would appear that you've got some sort of environmental policy, which I'm really intrigued by. So if you buy the basic at $99 a year, it says your purchase plants seven trees, renews offset of 250 kilograms of carbon dioxide. What's what's this all about? Is this just your sort of personal approach to the environment? And where, do you, I mean, I'm guessing that you have some sort of third party organization that you put a slice of the slice of your profits toward. Yeah, so that was actually inspired by um, Zach Katz at Gravity View um, uh, about a month ago. He was, they were, had some sort of, you know, Twitter, they had a tweet out there that said, click this and we'll plant trees for you. And I clicked it and I, <laughs> I saw that there was a service that they're, they're using called Ecology or Ecology, uh, ecology.com. And it, yeah, it just intrigued me. I, I was like, oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, and I saw that they had an API. And so, yeah, I've actually built a plugin that integrates with uh, easy digital downloads so that, yeah, when users will, will purchase here, it will automatically plant trees for them. Um, it'll offset carbon. And with their receipt, they actually get to kind of, you know, click through and see, okay, here's, here's a specific project that, that, that no, funded. that's um, great. Yeah, so I actually just posted um, in post status about the post status Slack um, yesterday about that plugin, and I'll probably have some information out there. Um, but yeah, to, it was, I was just inspired, and you know, I think being able to, to keep our planet clean, yes, let's do it. Yeah, so. <laughs> what a, that, uh, I really like that. And also just the fact that you it's not sort of some policy buried in the in the depths of a service level agreement or something yeah, like that it's it's, it's at the buy button which i think is really nice so you get you get seven trees if you buy the 99 dollars license and you get it you get even more trees you get 20 <laughs> 20 trees planted um and i just think that's great uh, hats off to you for making the effort to do that Thank we're you. at the 40 minute mark more or less so we've kind of run out of time but i uh, would encourage anybody to go to gravityhopper.com go and check it out if there is anything that I bungled or anything that I just blatantly missed or didn't give you an opportunity to talk about, please go for it now. Um, I I don't think so. Perfect. Um, yeah. I, I did set up a discount code for your listeners. That'll that'll if, be something worth mentioning. Let's hear it. Do, what is that? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can use the discount code WP Builds on the site. Um, and that that's a one use discount code per user um, and it'll give you 30% off site-wide anything well there you go not only do you yeah. plant trees but you give our audience 30% off as well that's great yeah share the love yeah yeah thank you that's really good <laughs> um, and, and totally taking me by surprise that's lovely I yeah. really appreciate that the, um, you're welcome if that's the case and there's no more um, no more of the actual plugin to mention do you do you make yourself available online do you have kind of a Twitter handle or a, an email address or a contact a contact form. I'm sure, you've got quite a few of those um, available yeah. online where people can reach out if they've got questions. Yeah, so there, there's a contact form on gravityhopper.com. Um, you can can follow us on Twitter, uh, just Gravity Hopper. Um, I'm also personally on Twitter at U uh, A M V. So there's four letters U A M V. I'm happy to answer any questions that folks have. Um, look forward to. Yeah, connecting with folks. You you got in early on the Twitter by the sounds of it. Anybody yeah. anybody who's got <laughs> yeah. a, a four letter 
Twitter handle as uh, yeah, you must have been yeah. you must have been there right at the beginning. That's great. At that time, I, I had used caps in my username, so I actually have capitalized, and, I, and I've been trying to work with Twitter because I I would love to have them all lowercase. I oh. just feel like that's cleaner now. Oh, and you can't you can't, can't modify it. I can't do it. Oh yeah, I, I can see it. you've got capital U, little yeah. little A, capital M, <laughs> capital V. Yeah, that's quirky. I've never seen that. There we go. Yeah, yeah you've got it. So it's my unique. initials basically: yeah. Joshua and then M V. Uh, yeah yeah nice um okay joshua that was really enjoyable thank you very much well i hope that you enjoyed that episode joshua giving us lots of information about his plug-in gravity hopper don't forget if you want to avail yourself of 30 percent off joshua has been very kind to give us a coupon code and that coupon code is wp builds use that at the checkout and get yourself a significant amount off if you have a need to have a central dashboard and all the other things that joshua mentioned for your gravity forms just before you go, I'm going to mention one other thing, and that is our Page Builder Summit. Don't forget, it's happening very, very soon. In fact, the dates are the 18th of October to the 22nd of October. You can find out about all the presenters and join our waitlist over at pagebuildersummit.com. Click on the pink button and get yourself on our waitlist, and we'll keep you updated. Please spread information about the summit to all of your friends, neighbours, cats, and even iguanas. Right, that's all I've got for you this week. We will be back next week for another episode of the WP Builds podcast. Before that, I'm going to fade in some cheesy music and say bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.